Hello witches, welcome back to the intro to Wicca video series. This is Greybeard Crowfather and this is the fourth video in the series. Tonight I'm going to be talking about a few different things. Um, then I'm going to do one more overview video on Friday night. And then on Sunday night I'm going to start going to the in-depth videos. And that night I'm actually going to do a... Samhain in-depth video seeing as that's coming up in 30 days. Speaking of which, tomorrow is October 1st. There is a full moon that should be occurring and with a full moon that would be a good time to get out and do magic that you would like to do and with uh, connections, reaffirming spells. Also as mentioned in a prior video, that you can get out and get a good communication going with the goddess. Would be a perfect night for it. As long as it's not raining outside, I would go out and do that. So, let's go ahead and jump right in right now. First topic I'm going to cover is the Wiccan Reed. Um, I see a lot of confusion about it on like Reddit, where I pretty much hang out all the time. People take the Reed as... like the absolute final word, which it's not. It's basically more of a guideline than anything. However, a lot of people actually don't know that the there's more to the read than what you may or may not see. A lot of people only see the last few lines, and it harm none, do what thou wilt. There's a lot more to it than that. And actually, I'm going to read the um, entire version of it to you right now. So this may take a couple minutes, but... This is the actual full read. The Wiccan read, being known as the Council of the Wise Ones, by the Wiccan laws ye must, in perfect love and perfect trust, live and let live, fairly take and fairly give, cast a circle thrice about to keep all evil spirits out, to bind the spell every time, let the spell be spake in rhyme. Soft of eye and light of touch, Speak little, listen much. Does you'll go the, by the waxing moon, sing and dance the wicked rune. Widdershins go when the moon doth wane, and the werewolf howls by the dread of wolf's bane. When the lady's moon is new, kiss thy hand to her times two. When the moon rides at her peak, then your heart's desires seek. Heed the north wind's mighty tail, lock the door and drop the sail. When the wind comes from the south, love will kiss thee on the mouth. When the wind blows from the east, expect the new and set the feast. When the west wind blows o'er thee, departed spirits restless be. Nine woods in the cauldron go, burn them quick and burn them slow. Elder be the lady's tree, burn it not, or cursed you'll be. When the wheel begins to turn, let the Beltane fires burn. When the wheel has turned a yule, light the log and let pan roll. Heed ye flower, bush, and tree, by the lady blessed be. Where the rippling waters go, cast a stone and truth you'll know. When ye have need, hearken not to others' greed. With the fool no season spend, or be counted as his friend. Merry meet and merry part. Bright the cheeks and warm the heart. Mind the threefold law you should. Three times bad and three times good. When misfortune is enow, wear the blue star on thy brow. True love, excuse me, true in love ever be, unless thy lover is false to thee. Eight words ye wicked read fulfill, and it harm none, do what ye will. Now, that was, um, from what I've gathered and what I've seen in the past, Adriana Porter was written, uh, excuse me, it was attributed to uh, Adriana Porter and, and written by uh, Lady Gwynne Thompson, a primary teacher of New England's Coven of Traditionalist Witches. That's the history that I have, and if there's... Uh, conflicting history, then I would very much like to hear it.
Sorry about that. We've got an old dog here and she gets restless sometimes. So that was my section on the Wiccan Reed. Uh, there are meanings behind each stanza and each part of it. So if you would like to go ahead and look it up, just look up the um, entire full Wiccan Reed. And some people actually do break it down. So it's good to know. Um, I actually went to a store at one point in time and bought it in, you know, paper form. I think it was $1.95 or something like that. And then just took it and brought it home and, and framed it. And it's actually inside our, um, we have the uh, elements on the wall and that one's in the center. So yeah, check it out. Okay, the next section is in regards to doing magic and casting spells. Two of the very most important parts of doing magic and casting spells is visualizations and intents. When you're doing magic, you want to visualize that spell becoming a reality. So you want to make as best of an intent as you can by using visualization. So you want to see that magic and that spell taking shape, coming through as the power that you're bringing about and finalizing and becoming the end all be all of that magic that you're trying to perform. So intent and visualization can be um, brought about in two ways. You either just, well, in my experience, you can either just stand or close your eyes, see it in your mind, and then as it's forming, have it come out of your mind into the form that you would like to do it or see it be, be as. Some people like to meditate and get it to come about in that method. Uh, Meditation is a really good way to actually visualize and get your intentions all in order in that moment before you actually cast that spell. I'm not telling you how to do it. It's totally up to you, whatever way you want to do it. But those are two very co important components of getting a spell to actually work. <clears throat> We'll go deeper into that in a um, further video down the line too. It's just an overview, give you a good, uh, you know, cross section of what's going on. Um, I'm gonna break this part here for a moment. I, I wanted to see uh, if anybody had actually had the time to go ahead and and uh, do the homework that I'd actually talked about the other day. Hi, this is Sabrina, not like Sabrina the Teenage Witch but spelled differently. And she's getting to be a little bit nosy, so I'm gonna have to put her down. Everybody, okay. <laughs> uh, so hopefully y'all got a chance to do a um, little magic and do the spell on your own uh, from the last time. We'll have a nice little uh, homework section on this uh, video coming up shortly here. <clears throat> Um, the next section I wanted to talk about is basically shops and festivals and what you can and can't find at shops and festivals. If there's a metaphysical store around you and it's open and running, go and visit it if you can. You'll get great information from the owners. You might find people of your the same like minded that that are that you are, and you can actually possibly even find a group that's accepting students there always looking for the most part. Uh, I know it's hard to do with the, with the pandemic going on and everything, but we've been having these, our circles come back since, let's see, what's, uh, we did, uh, Litha. Litha was the first one that we actually brought everybody back. Didn't have any problems. Basically just told anybody that if you're not feeling good or you feel sick, don't come, don't endanger yourself, don't endanger anybody. Nobody's had any problems, so they may, other circles and covens may actually be uh, getting their groups together to celebrate the Sabbaths and the Esbaths, so. Now, regarding the shops and the festivals, sometimes you can find some really nice stuff that you can use for decorating your house or your altar, whatever the case may be. Uh, one of the ones that we attend is the Central New York 
Pagan Pride, which is close to Syracuse, New York. Now, it was canceled this year. It usually runs in September, so we didn't go. We went last year. Uh, we skipped the year before that, and we went the year before that. So we skip a year every year just because we would like to see, you know, hopefully, like, new vendors and such calling. So one of the cool things that I got at the... Um, from the vendor there from the first time that we went the very first year was I got a nice little set of horns that we uh, actually use for um, like when we're doing rituals. So I'd put these on my head and then go out and do the rituals and my neighbors love it. They usually just stand there and watch us. They don't bother us one bit. They know that we're wicked and they don't, they don't care. So they usually just watch because they're curious and they never say anything and you know they don't bug us. So that's cool with that, whatever. Um, the guy that I got these horns from, uh, if anybody's interested, he can make different sets. So I had a set of deer antlers that uh, my grandson had given to me for, was gonna use them for like hunting or something like that, but I never did. And I sent a picture of them to this guy and asked him if he could make a headpiece out of them. And he said yes. So I sent them to him and he did actually make a headpiece. So I have graduated from the small horns to wearing these during our rituals. And I really actually love it when I wear these. And if uh, there was a Pagan Pride celebration this year, I'd probably wear these to them too, because you can just tie them down and there you go, headpiece. Speaking of headpieces, if uh, you do want to wear something, a headpiece or some jewelry or whatever the case may be, when you're doing your rituals, go for it. It gives you a more personal experience. Speaking of jewelry, if you are confident and not worried about what people think, wear your jewelry outwardly. Um, I, I wear, under my beard here, <laughs> I wear a crystal and then I wear a pentagram. Now, I don't wear them when I'm out at work just for the sake of, you know, not that I really even care about what anybody thinks, because I don't, but I just do it out of respect or whatever the case may be. Usually, though, when we walk around, my wife will have her pentagram on and I'll have mine out. And actually, it was funny because when we did one time, we were walking around town and there was a festival going on and as we walked by this couple, the guy said, marry me. And we're like, oh, hey, marry me. And then we asked them, are they pagan, blah, blah, blah. And so, yes, and then they actually ended up joining the circle. So they've been coming to the circle for the past uh, year and a half now. So if you have no worries about it, do it. Be yourself. People are going to give you grief about it. Screw them. They're a lot worse off than we are anyways because they're so judgmental. We're not. Just don't worry about it. Do what you feel is right. <clears throat> so my final section for the video here, and actually going to be part of the homework, I mentioned the other night about finding a sacred space. Hopefully you have somewhere in your home or close to your home or behind your home or wherever, out in your garage, in DB, down in your basement, whatever the case may be, that you can turn into your sacred space. What most people want to do is, before they start using it, is cleanse that sacred space. Different ways of cleansing. Most people tend to use sage more than anything. Light it up, go around, remove the negativity from the area and do that each and every time before they perform a ritual. It doesn't always have to be sage. Uh, I tend to like to use um, Palo Santo, but I know that's becoming more and more endangered, so we try to not use that anymore. Uh, what I'll do is just I'll get a, a stick of incense, um, some of that, uh, oh goodness, what's the name of that stuff? It's not the Naga Champ, it's the, oh, I can't remember the name. Starts with a W. I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyways, we'll light a stick of that up and then we'll actually go around and do the smoke to clear the area and, and remove the negativity. You can use incense, you can use uh, sage. If you want, you can just use uh, salt or black salt, even just simple water. Just 
charge the water as you see fit and go ahead and cleanse the space. So saying that, that is going to lead to your homework for this week. Find your sacred space. Cleanse that sacred space. And then do a ritual. Simple spell if need be. Complex if you would like. No matter, whatever you like. But definitely cleanse your sacred space and, and use it for one time. Uh, one thing I did want to point out too, um, with it being a full moon tomorrow night, if you are interested, you can actually make some moon water, which you can use in rituals and spells. Go outside, take a, um, I usually use a um, mason jar, and I'll fill it with some purified water. We have like a Brita water filter. Even if it's tap water, it doesn't matter. Pour it, you know, fill the jar about, you know, much, depending on how big of the jar that you have. Take that outside. Put it right out where you know it's going to get a full night of the moonlight hitting it. And then in the morning, go out and collect it. And then just keep it stored away, like under your altar or in a, in a closet or somewhere where you'll be able to actually get access to it without any problems. And, and use it for spells and use it for rituals. Use it for cleansing. Use it for whatever you wish. Drink it if you like. You may even find that you have a better way to communicate with the goddess if you drink it after that. So, two, two things of homework tonight then. Make moon water if you can, and then go ahead and cleanse, find and cleanse your sacred space. That's it for tonight. I'll be doing another video, as I said, on Friday night, one more overview. I know I've been throwing a lot at everybody. There is a lot to cover. Once I start going more in-depth, though, starting on... Uh, Sunday night, you'll 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 be you'll be doing a lot more and working a lot more into this. Every of the in-depth videos, I'm also going to have a homework assignment for you to do, and um, for sure, Sunday night's video is going to be a Samhain related uh, video, which will give you ideas of what you can do for a ritual for that time on August. August, wow. October 31st, which again also is a full moon. So two full moons this month, October 1st, October 31st. It'll be the blue moon, and it's going to be a powerful night. So signing off, everybody, have a good night. Blessed be. This is Great Beard Co-Father. Have a good night.